here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I interview top entrepreneurs and leaders and how they built their business. We're here at the Sage Summit, and the company today is Entryless and Mike Galarza, who hails from Mexico. Mike, thanks for joining me, and tell me about Entryless and what it does. Yeah, uh, thanks for the invitation. So, uh, yes, my name is Mike Galarza. I'm the founder and CEO of Entryless. I originally came uh, to the U.S. as an intern, and I actually found out that uh, the, there was a lot of uh, problems in the accounting space because the, there were a lot of manual processes. So when I set out to envision a solution, uh, it had to be automated and it had to uh, reduce the time that it was spent actually managing those systems. What were you doing as an intern when you first came uh, here? I was actually doing the payables. So I was I was manually typing uh, accounting records. You're like, I don't want to manually type yes, anything. Exactly, <laughs> yes. You. And uh, and it was it was uh, an opportunity in which I went onto a different company, much larger one, and I had a team that actually would be doing the data entry. But I kept thinking, you know, from my, my first uh, internship job, that that couldn't be possible. It was an I, easier way. I couldn't, couldn't stand it, and it, it was it was a pain that I, I saw it. And then when I talked to my colleagues, they had the same pain, and uh, there wasn't a solution the way that I thought about it, and I, I just had to do it. So what made you decide to come over, because you're originally from Mexico, when did you come over to the States? How long have you been here? I've been uh, close to eight years now, and uh, the company since uh, founding has been four years and a half. Yes. So is your family still in Mexico? Yes, all my fa- friends and family are over there, but uh, okay. yeah, the, the, the thing, the entr- entryless is uh, all in, uh, in the United States, and that's really what uh, really drives through. What's the tough part about starting a company in the U.S. when you're from Mexico, because obviously you can probably work from anywhere. What made you decide to stay and start in the U.S.? Yeah, it was actually the talent that uh, you can find in Silicon Valley yeah. and, and really the emerging of uh, cultures that happen in, uh, in, in such a place. And I, I thought of, of that as a huge value and also the ecosystem that can support a, a startup uh, like Entryless and any other startup due to the networking and, and also the speed of innovation and the encouragement that you get from fellow entrepreneurs to really drive through because entrepreneurship, uh, it's, it's, it's really hard. Uh, but it's very enjoyable, and then once you win, you really win, and uh, and that's what motivated me to stay in the United States and not go back to Mexico yeah. and do the same thing. So you you said entrepreneurship is hard; it's not always easy. Talk about some of the hard hard times with starting the company. Yeah, so actually the first, the hardest thing was for me the transition uh, to be uh, doing a daily repetitive job into being an, an, an entrepreneur right. that you need to do a little bit of everything and you have to have perfect execution because otherwise your company will be dead. Uh, I think that transition took me about a year uh, at, at the time that we were actually developing the yeah. product. So were you working full time while you were developing? I or Yes, I had, I had to do that uh, as yeah. well because one of the biggest hurdles as well was the visa. So I had to get an investor visa so I could work really? full time ah. into, into the, right, into, into, the, uh, into the startup. Right. You're like, I need to stay here. Ex- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and, and that transition took about a year. But then once, once you fully understand as an entrepreneur what you need to do, uh, because you always have uh, the end goal of what you want to achieve, but then how you do it, right. it comes in different shapes and forms, and that can change from time to time. Right. So what did, talk about one of the days, right? Mm-hmm. One of the long days. What did that look like when you're working yeah. and then, yeah. yeah, you tell me. So now one of the long days we'll be talking to current investors, uh, preparing, uh, you know, reports for them, uh, talking to customers that uh, would like to use the product, but maybe they they want to see more. So you, you need to stay with them. You need to show them the product, uh, where you are going, uh, talking as well to, to the employees so that uh, <clears throat> actually 
they are developing uh, the product that the customers are actually asking and that we are not derailing that. And then as well as uh, bringing the numbers on the conversions and, and bringing, really putting uh, you know, the marketing perspective in, into one whole pot so that we can bring customers. So Mike, tell me about one of your favorite client success stories, your customer success stories. Well, right now, uh, the biggest one, it's a company that is down in uh, Denver. They have probably over uh, 15 uh, companies right now uh, using Entrelist, and they love it because they make payments through Entrelist, and they also automate their bills through Entrelist. Uh, they, they, uh, they have property management uh, companies. They have restaurants. Uh, it's called the Fly Fisher uh, Company. So they're a group of accountants that manage a lot of uh, uh, small companies, and that really uh, helps them to drive through that uh, you know, tra transition to be a, a sustainable company, and 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 they do that thanks to using um, companies like Entrelist, so that they can get their financial reports instantaneous. So, who's the perfect ideal customer that should be using Entrelist? The perfect ideal customer is anybody that has bills and that don't have time to manually type them into their accounting system, and that need to pay those bills. Usually, the the companies that come to Entrelist right now. They have probably on average uh, 50 to 100 bills that they need to m usually manually type into their system. Yeah. And they need to do about 20 payments a week. So is That's it like perfect. what size company, like employee-wise uh, usually? Yes, employee-wise it can be one to 10 persons, mm -hmm. but we measure more by turnover. So it's around $10 million in turnover, uh, our average. So it can yeah. be that we have a sole proprietorship that maybe is doing only 100000 a year. Or we might have a company that is doing a $20 million and that is a distribution business right. maybe down in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk about some of the milestones um, on the entrepreneurial journey, right? Yes. Some of the highs and lows. What's a, what's a low mm -hmm. and then what's a high? Start off with what's, a, what's yes. been like a, a hard time that you yeah. had to push through? Yeah, yeah. I think, I, think uh, I mean, a hard time would be, you know, for me, it's about everything about the customer and not serving the customer the proper way. It's really something that I spend my time. Yeah. Uh, because then why do you exist, right? Why, right. why does a company have the right to exist? And that's, that's something that, uh, uh, for example, one time there was an error on the system in which we sent out about seven emails uh, to companies that have already unsubscribed and that shouldn't have uh, been sent out an email, but it was actually a billing email. That's why they were not on our <laughs> unsubscribe base. <laughs> And it was a, an error from... They from get a side. bill that they didn't know was coming and they so were not happy about. They got a notice that we were trying to charge their monthly uh, subscription when they didn't even have a subscription. So uh, they posted a bad review somewhere that, you know, that wasn't a bad com that it was a bad company. So I really took, you know, the right approach. Okay, I'm going to talk to them directly. So I, right. I, I went out to them and say, hey, this is really what happened. We're very sorry. Uh, and, uh, you know, please uh, help, help, right. help our business because it's not really our intention. And, right. and there they understood. And uh, right. I was able, you know, to fix the and, and get them to understand the situation. Right. But that was really a dark day because, you know, in the meantime, that you understand first what happened and then that you understand that it's right. an error. Uh, you really don't want yeah. that to happen. Yeah, that's yeah. smart because you can almost turn someone who hates you into a customer. <laughs> like, that's maybe a good tactic. You just build them. Oh, we didn't mean to do that. Oh, what does yes. your company exactly. do again? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What about like uh, a high point? For you. Yeah, high point is uh, any time that you hire the right person, any time that you hire someone that you know that is going to help you transform the company. Uh, because it's not only about you, the entrepreneur, the founder, but it's also the team that, that gets surrounds you and how they will help you drive that vision forward. And uh, some of the heights would be when, when we you know, ha ha brought the key members yeah. of the team. Yeah. So talk about your team. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. So the team is uh, fantastic. It's awesome. Some of them are right here at the conference. Uh, the first one is, you know, CTO. He's the one that really uh, drives uh, the whole company to succeed on our technology. And uh, I make sure that, you know, we bring people to that technology and that they actually use it. Uh, but that's uh, when you're one of the uh, key areas of, uh, of, of Entrelist and why we have been successful uh, right. nowadays. Yeah. And, uh, and that's something that, that has been uh, one of the uh, highlights. What other parts do you need to run the company? What other positions? Uh, open positions right now? No, not uh, open, but any positions like you know, obviously, founder, CEO, right. CTO. Who else is, oh, is yes, on staff? Exactly. So right now, it's uh, we're focusing a lot on uh, on the on the conversion to paid customers. Uh, Entrelist has a has a free free component that uh, we love companies to use it. And uh, if they meet the certain threshold to 
upgrade and you know have more needs for entryless software that's where we come in uh, our salesforce come in and that's we're building that that part of right now and and recently uh there's also our vp of business development that recently joined he came he's coming from visa and uh, he's helping us build oh, out really? the full uh, yeah. customer you know success sales development reps account managers and and the full sales sales stack and that's wow. a key area that we are focusing so mike how did you find or meet your cto it was actually through a, a known connection that we had. They knew that uh, I was looking for, uh, you know, really a, a kick-ass CTO. And, uh, and, and they, we got introduced. And at the first meeting, the first 15 minutes, we, we knew that uh, we were on the same page and that we really wanted to transform uh, Entrelist into the next level. So it was a natural connection when you know that when you talk about the things that, uh, you know, that, that, you, that you want to do and how you want to do it, uh, it's not that we agreed on everything, but... But where we wanted to go, it was a line. So it was just like a natural thing when, when we started working. It's like, oh, look, it feels like we have already been working for like the past 10 years. Right, right. Yeah. So it was very interesting, actually. So like, <laughs> talk about your proudest business achievement mm -hmm. with Entrelist. Well, the pr proudest achievement um, so far, I still uh, dream of uh, the ultimate goal of uh, getting uh, all the companies to implement Entrelist, you know, have have a much more larger base. That's something that I feel that uh, we're not done yet and that we have we have achieved a lot, but uh, we have a higher expectation of achievement and, 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 and that's what we really dream of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first, I'm gonna have one last question for you, but where can people find you online? Where should they check you out? Yeah, perfect. So they can simply type on their web browser, entrelist.com, and uh, they can find our website, they can sign up. It's uh, free to use uh, up to a certain threshold and uh, we welcome them and they can also find us on Twitter or Facebook at Enterless. So basically how you got the domain and, and why? Yeah, actually we got the domain because we really wanted a name that will represent the company moving forward and the, for the years to come. So we wanted really a forward thinking name that could uh, portray in, a, in one word what the company does. And we couldn't find a better way to depict that to a name that it called Entrelist, which is right. a two word. Uh, we put it together into one to make it a name, yeah. to make it a brand. And, uh, and fortunately enough, we found that uh, it was available and uh, we purchased uh, all domains uh, related to it. I'm so surprised it was actually available, Mike. So Mike, last thing, everyone should check out Entrelist.com. But last thing, what's a big lesson that you've learned that you'd impart on other entrepreneurs, whether starting a software company or another company? What's a big lesson for you um, that really sticks with you? Yeah, the truth is that um, the biggest thing is not to... Um, you know, give up. Uh, you really need to make uh, do the breakthrough, and it might be hard. Yeah. And uh, it's always going to be hard. It's never yeah. going to be easy. If it was, if it was easy, there would be hundred times more companies around the world, right. successful companies around the world. So uh, just never, never, ne never lay down. And uh, a company fails, or a company, uh, you know, shuts down when when the founder decides not to pursue their dream. Yeah. And that's that's the point that a company it's at. So my, my point in being that never, never, never give up and, and always continue to, to pursue uh, your passion and, and that, let that passion uh, help you drive through and be the fuel to build a business. Where did you get that not give up attitude? Like from growing up, there was there someone or your, someone in your family that you, you were instilled or where did you get I think, that from? I, think I have never uh, thought, thought about that, but I, I think it's, it's the... I think it's a, a life achievement that, that I want to do in the sense that I, I want to I have the passion to helping uh, other people and with Entrelas we save them time and, and reduce ef efficiently you know, in their businesses. So I think that passion for me to help others um, really drive me to never quit and just continue to do it because I know that I'm going to be able to help uh, thousands and uh, millions of businesses in the coming years to yeah. come thanks to... Uh, not not giving up, and I think uh, I think that comes part in in, in sport. Um, so I'm a, a big uh, cyclist, and uh, oh, really? I love endurance sport. So I think it comes as well uh, from yeah. that end that uh, at the end uh, you achieve the hill, and and uh, it's it's it, the That's view is right. great. Right. <laughs> the view is great from Sage Summit. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it.